No, he's not being evil. He's disciplining his children. Read on. Which he spake against us and against our judges. So he says he spake us. against us. Just you got children. You got you got nieces, nieces and nephews. You, you you got parents. When you was coming when you was coming up, your parents gave you guidelines. Your parents told you, hey, if you if you keep your room clean, I'm gonna give you twenty dollars a week. And if you didn't keep your room clean, you didn't get that twenty dollars a week. Or hey, you better be in the house by the time the street lights come on. And if you didn't come on, if you didn't come in when them street lights was on, what happened? You walk through them, you walk through that door, and you get smacked upside the head. You get a whoop. The same thing with the Most High God, because the nation of Israel is His children. Right. Read. Which He spake against us and against our judges that judged us uh -huh. by bringing upon us a great evil. He brought upon us a great evil. The things that we've been through is a great evil. Ain't no other race been through what we've been That's why I say it's a great evil. Ain't no other nation of people been through the things that we've been through. No other nation of people can handle the things that we've been through. That's right. That's right. Read. Huh? Exactly. Read. For under the whole heaven. For under the whole heaven. The, on, on the whole earth. Read. Have not been done. Have not been done. Read. As have been done upon Jerusalem. As have been done upon Jerusalem. Jerusalem is referring to the Israelites. So there's no nation on this earth that has been through the things that we've been through. And y'all seen it. Y'all see it today. Ain't no na ain't no nation. If people can name, okay. That's not even in comparison. You had over 7 billion Native American Indians that was killed. When we was coming over here on slave ships, you had over six, six billion, six million. What they have? One, one million or something like that? Not even close. You can, it's no comparison to the things that happened to us. The hatred toward us has lasted throughout centuries. Yes. Why do they hate us, huh? Yeah, read that. And that's another thing. Because what we, you, you just walked up shortly, but what we're doing is proving how the Bible is a true book. And it's relevant to us. Because everything that's written in the Bible, you can read it and see it. You can point it out like, you know what? And when you get to understand, when somebody explain it to you, you be like, dang, I didn't know that was in the Bible. I read the Bible 20 times, and I've never seen that. Why? Because somebody has to show you. Read that. Ezekiel chapter 35, verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir. So it says, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir. Mount Seir is the capital city of the nation of Esau, or Edom, which is the so-called white man when you look at Genesis chapter 25 and 25. Read. Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir, Read. and prophesy against it. And prophesy against it. Read. And say unto it, uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee. He says, O Mount Seir, I'm against thee. This is talking about the Edomites. Go to jump to the verse. Verse 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel. So he said, read it again. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. So he said, thou, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. When you go back to the book of Genesis, they was two different seeds, two different nations. But this is what this is, he said, because you had a perpetual hatred. Esau hated Jacob from the beginning. That's right. Jacob was turned to, his name was turned to Israel. Esau hated us from the beginning. Why? Because he despised his birthright and gave it to us. Well, one, it was prophecy. Two, he, he didn't care about it. It, it, it. it held no importance to him. When you read the, when you read the history in Genesis, well, let's finish this. Let's finish this first. Because thou has had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel. So he had a perpetual hatred and he has shed the blood of the children of Israel. Who's shooting us down in the streets? Outside of us and our murder, outside of us and our evil killing each other, who, who's shooting us down in the streets? At the, the, the most, the whites. And what did I say again? Because there has had a perpetual hatred 
and has shed the blood of the children of Israel. Has shed the blood of the children of Israel. They've been murdering us since we came over here. Since before the end, they've been murdering us. Without, without question, without even thought. It's because we are the, it's because it's deeper than that. It's because we are the children of Israel. We are the sons of God. We are the sons and daughters of God. That's we are right. God's chosen people. Bring it out. Meaning, we above all other nations. You mean one color people? It's not going to be one nation of people. It's gonna go back. It's go. It's gonna go back to the times of beginning. That's a, that's a whole another history lesson. But it's gonna go back to the times of the beginning. We gonna be in rule. We gonna rule the. We, we gonna rule the world like we supposed to. And the other nations are gonna be the servants. They gonna be doing the the the, the handwork, the building, and all that. Huh? But it's, de it's deeper than our skin color. It's deeper than our skin color. Right now. It's deeper than us. Right, right now, the main thing that we need to be focused on... Did we finish that? Read that. It has had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. So, Esau, the so-called white man, Murdered us, robbed us, killed us, and when it was supposed to stop, they continued. Esau, the so-called white man. So it was it was supposed to come to an end. They were supposed to do it for a dispensation of time and stop. But the Bible said they kept they kept doing it. They continued to do it after their time was up. That's the how much how deep their hatred flow. Exactly. Exactly. Exactly created us for a purpose we not doing it so we being punished that's that's the best the that's a nutshell of what we know but the thing is what we got to do to turn the table that's the question what do we have to do give me let's start with ecclesiastes chapter uh 12 and 13. because the whole purpose of us being here we in, the reason that we are in the evils that we in from city to city state to state country to country we at the bottom Right. No matter where you go, you might have a select few here and there that rise and get rich, but they not. That's that's not rich. That's just you got money. That's not having rich. If being rich is keeping the commandments, that's because right. when you keep the commandments, you're gonna get you're gonna get that eternal heritage that you're supposed to have. Read the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter twelve, verse thirteen. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. So it says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What's the conclusion of our life? What's the purpose of our life here on earth? Why are we here? To do God's will. And what is his will? We're going to get there. We're going to show you that. Read. Fear God and keep his commandments. The whole purpose of us is to fear God and keep his commandments. Do what he told us to do. That's you. That's the fear. You see, you suppose before you do something, if you let's say, let's get the thing is, yeah. I fear God's judgment. When you when you fear to fear God is to respect Him. Psalm forty and eight. We're gonna show you that because we just read the whole duty of man is to keep his fear God and keep his commandments. So uh, out of our fear for the Most High God, meaning we fear His judgments if we don't do what He said to do. We fear we fear the consequences of our actions. Just the same way with our parents. After a certain time, we get a certain age. It's like you know what? I ain't doing that. My mom gonna tell my my mom gonna tell me up. My dad gonna tell me up. You know what? I ain't even gonna do that. That's the fear. That's respect. Read. Psalms 40 verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. So David said, I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. So will is the key, the key word we want to keep in mind. Read. Yea, thy law is within my heart. So he delights to do God's will, and he says, thy law is in my heart. 
So the will of God is his law. That's right. That's what that's what we have to take delight in. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Keeping his law. Get Deuteronomy 20, 25. I'm going to show you a law that's in the Bible that pertains to our sisters and our brothers. I pray and hope they help me. Rick? It can't be an instant thing, man. I'm going to need some help. I need some help, man. I apologize about that. I apologize about that. Every time I that's because a lot of times when we read the Bible without understanding we read the Bible and we get frustrated because we don't understand it but the only way to understand the Bible is by applying the things that we read actually doing the commandment you have to apply read Deuteronomy 22 verse 5 the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Uh -huh. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So what is a woman's garment that a man shouldn't wear? A dress. A dress. That's, that's, the, that's the most important. We see a lot of men wearing dresses today. So and so we know that this is talking, it says garment. This is talking about clothing. So read it again, read it from the top. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So now back to the top, it said a woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man. What does what do women wear that pertain to men? Most, remember we talking about it says remember we're talking about it says garment. What does a woman wear today? that pertains to a man. When you go to the restroom, how do you know which, which restroom is the men's restroom and which one is the women's? What the picture has. What the men's picture has. <clears throat> it shows a dress. But the men's show pants. So the thing that women wear today that it pertains to men are pants. That's right. Yes. There's two things. You can get religious accommodation to wear a dress. And even if they, let's say, you, you get a religious accommodation to wear a dress. And they say, no, nah, you can't wear no dress. When you go to work, for this, until you're able to find something else, you go to work, you wear the pants because you're at work. We in captivity. We subject to our enemies. But once you get out that job, you got to put a dress on. Because now, once you leave that job, you you in control. It's no longer the job got they uh foothold on you. You put on a dress when you leave that job. Y'all actually made Y'all told That's bad for them. Because when when Christ come back, he going to judge us by these laws. He going to bring, the, give me uh, Romans chapter 2 and 12. Because the thing about it, anybody can say, oh, yeah, we ain't got to keep the laws, but what we got to do, we can't go off what men say. We can't go off what people say. We got to go with what the Bible say. Read that. Romans chapter 2, verse 12. For as many as have sinned without the law. So it says, many have sinned, as many as have sinned without the law, meaning they didn't know what the laws were, but it's still considered sin. You know what sin is? Yes, it's breaking the commandments. So he says, so as many as have sinned without the law, so if you broke God's commandments and you didn't know you was breaking God's commandments, read, shall also perish without the law. They're going to still perish, even though they didn't know what the laws was. Read. And as many as have sinned in the law, so as many have sinned in the law, meaning they knew what the laws was, but they still sinned, read, shall be judged by the law. They're going to be judged by the law. So whether you know or you don't know, whether you're in a Christian church and they tell you you ain't got to keep them, and you ain't studied to show yourself approved, you ain't got the understanding, you're still going to perish. That's right. The Most High God still going to judge you right. according to His commandments. Right. Read. Verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God. So you're not just before God just because you hear what the Bible says. Because you read the Bible every day. If you're not applying it, you're not just before God. To him, you it's like, don't talk to me. I don't want to hear you. You go you go to pray before God and you ain't keeping his commandments. He like, uh, I don't hear you. That's how it is. It's, it's, it, it seems harsh, but that's how it is. The same thing with a parent, a parent and their children. If I, if, if I tell my son, hey, go clean your room, and he come, hey, 
Can I get this? I don't want to hear what you get. Go do it. You clean your room? I don't want to hear what you got to say. That's the same way with our God. And it's just. It's just judgment because we, if we breaking his commandments, he don't want to hear us. Read. But the doers of the law shall be justified. The doers of the law shall be justified. So anybody that's walking this earth saying, oh, the laws are done away with. Right. This said the doers of the law. Right. What law is he talking about? His laws that's written in the Bible. That's right. The laws are not done away with. Right. We've been fooled. We've been bamboozled. Right. The Christian church has not taught us something as simple as growing our beards. Me and growing beards. I was in Christianity for seven years, shaving my beard, walking around with a goatee, walking around with a chin strap, chin strap. Then within a week of knowing I was an Israelite, I found out I got to grow my beard. Right. But I was, I was in the church for seven years. They never read that? Right. That you, you, you didn't know that was there? Right. They, 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 don't, they don't have no regard for God's laws. Right. They, they teaching us things. That then, and this is the reason why. Get you to chapter 8. Judah chapter 8 and verse 24. Because the nations, believe it or not, we don't know who we are, but the nations know who we are. Those that's living in our land, the Jewish, they know who we are. They funded the slave trade. They know who we are. The upper, your upper escalon, your, 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 your high class whites and other, they know who we are. Every, that's why everything that's set up in this name, everything that's set up, all the evils that's set up, is against us. It's not against the other nations. It's against us to keep us in sin. Right. Because they know when we start keeping the commandments, the Most High God going to return back to his children. He's going to fight for us. Right. Read that. The book of Judah, chapter 5, verse 20. Now therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people. So he says, if, if, so this is... Was the Assyrian? So this is the Assyrian army speaking about Israel, speaking about us. Read. If there be any error in this people, so he goes. So he going to his captain, his general. He's like, hey, if it's any error in the children of Israel, read. And they sin against their God. And they break their God's rules. Read. Let us consider that this shall be their ruin. Hey, let's plot and plan to go take them over because they, they God not gonna fight for them. We got a chance. The nations know about God. The nations, the, believe it or not, the nations know that there's one true God, and that one true God is the God of Israel. Right. The God of the Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. They know that. Read. Hey, let us go up, and we shall overcome them. Say, let let us, hey, let us bear up our arms. Let's get, let's get together, and let's go take over. Let's go take over their nation. Read. But if there be no iniquity in their nation. But there be if there be no sin in their nation, meaning they keeping the commandments. Read. Let my Lord now pass by. Let my Lord now pass by. Hey, just keep going. Don't even think of, don't even consider going to take over them. Because if they keeping their laws, they God's commandments, if they keeping they if they obeying their father's rules, he gonna fight for them. Don't even don't even go over there. Because we're gonna be destroyed. What's the purpose? They, they basically say they know. Hey, what's the purpose of setting our, setting our nation up to die? And we know that if they're keeping the commandments, let's leave them alone. Read. Lest their Lord defend them. It says, lest their Lord defend them. Meaning, they, the nations know that when we keeping the commandments, the Most High God is going to defend us. He's not going to let no evil come upon us. Read. And their God be for them. And their God be for them. Read. And we become a reproach before all the world. And we become a reproach before all the world. Hey, we got all the guns, we got all the, the mightiest army, but if we come before the children of Israel while they obeying their God's commandments, we're going to be embarrassed. They're going to they gonna defeat us with few because their God is with them. The nations know that. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. Sierra Leone, 
144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.